to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our God, in your plan of salvation for us, you healed the leper. Cleanse our bodies and souls from every sin in thought and in deed, and sanctify our spirits with your Holy Spirit. May we glorify you with purity and holiness and give thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the Church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the eternal Word who took flesh and became like us in all things except sin, to the Creator of all who appeared in the world as a physician and healed the sick in body and in soul. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, our God, physician of souls and bodies, in your plan of salvation you had pity upon the leper who was an outcast and healed him by your word. We lift up our eyes and hearts to you at all times, and we implore you never to keep your mercy and grace from us, but to look upon us with compassion as you did with the leper. Cleanse us and us, make us holy. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to stretch forth your hand and to have compassion upon us. For you have said, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. With unfailing hope, we implore you to forgive our sins in your love and heal us in your grace. Accept those who repent and bring back those who have gone astray. Console the grieving and strengthen the weak. Satisfy the hungry and provide for those in need. Bless those who are generous and enrich them with good deeds. Remember the departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, forever. Find your 
rest in Christ. Son we adore, who heals and makes lepers clean. The Spirit we thank, who gives life to those astray, that they return humbly to Him. Let God be praised. Heavenly Physician, after you healed the leper, you told him to go and to show himself to the priest and make an offering. Now with the fragrance of this incense, we offer ourselves to you as an offering pleasing to you. In your mercy, accept us from us and protect us. We glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. <laughs> our Lord, our physician, you have made the leper clean. Now we beg you to heal us. By your word, forgive our sins. from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, therefore, sin must not reign over your mortal bodies so that you obey their desires. And do not present the parts of your bodies to sin as weapons for wickedness. But present yourselves to God as raised from the dead to life, and the parts of your bodies to God as weapons for righteousness. For sin is not to have power over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Of course not. Do you know, do you not know, that if you present yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey? Either sin 
which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that although you were once slaves of sin, you have become obedient from the heart to the pattern of teaching which you were entrusted. Freed from sin, you have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of the weakness of our nature. For just as you presented the parts of your bodies as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness for lawlessness, so now present them as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. But what profit did you gain then from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit that you have leads to sanctification and its end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Praise be to God always. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, who proclaim life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory. To listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Mark writes, Rising early before dawn, Jesus left and he went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him came after him, and on finding him they said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go on to the nearby villages, so that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. And a leper came up to him and kneeling down begged him and said to him, If you desire, you can make me clean. And moved with compassion, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. 
This is the truth. Peace be with you. Then freed from sin, we have been made slaves of justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It is interesting to see the details in this story that's given to us in the gospel today, because we have, if you note, three details in the center. Our Lord arises early to pray. So it's an example for us already on this aspect that we increase our prayer life during the Lenten season because God is speaking. And there are graces and there are things that God wants to teach us during these seven weeks of Lent, these eight weeks, that he does not communicate at other times of the year. There are graces for the moment during our, the liturgical year. The second thing is that when the apostles come to tell our Lord, everyone's looking for you, he doesn't even remark about that aspect of it. He just says, let's go on to these other villages now. He's not going backward. You always go forward. And in going forward, we're told he teaches. And he's preaching within these villages and casting out demons. So we notice the connection between the knowledge that we learn from this revelation of God and our learning and deeper and deeper into our faith and the aspect of our conquest over iniquity, over the demon. And then, of course, the third thing is this healing of leprosy. And leprosy has always had this image of sin throughout the scriptures and throughout many of the classical cultures. They don't know what to do with it. The word is Greek, lepra. It's from the Greek word lepis. Lepis means scale. And because of what happens to the people's skin and the loss of the cartilage from the nerve damage and the other infections that come as consequence to this initial bacterial infection, the scaled aspect, leprosy. And of course, for us in the modern world, it's even a better image of sin. Because, of course, what they were affected by was the appearance on the outside, the skin conditions that would develop, or the loss of members, organs, noses, ears. But we know now, because of this bacterial infection, that it's an infection of the nervous system. It's a nerve damage which is also done, and consequently other organs and skin. So it's reminding us that sin first restarts interiorly. Nobody becomes a serial murderer overnight. Nobody becomes an adulterer overnight. These things are built into, and it's that inner nerve damage, if you want, to use the modern medical term, and this inner invisible first aspect of the bacterial infection. And we're told also that this bacterial infection may lay within someone from five to 20 years before it ever manifests itself. It is with our modern knowledge, of the scientific knowledge of this disease, it's even a better image of sin than the fathers could ever have imagined. Because that's precisely what sin is. It's something which infects us, it weakens us, and it can go on for years with never being visible. And we live in this delusion that we're healthy. We've mentioned to you the number of times people have said to me over the years, I'm a good person. Well, congratulations. We're glad you don't need the Lord God for your redemption. You can do it on your own because that's basically what they're saying. That's why they don't need the mysteries. They don't need the Eucharist or the Mass. And it's a tragedy because it's an infection. It's the, it's, there's a total lack of awareness 
of what takes place within us, which eventually becomes those outward manifestations of sin. Our Lord says it in the gospel. It's not what someone takes in, it's not what you eat or drink according to the laws of Moses that contaminates someone. Contamination comes from the, what comes out of the mouth, what comes from the heart outward. And so the leprosy that we have today, of course, is placed straight into the second week of Lent now for us to consider of our own journey of the examination of our consciences, our minds, our spirits. Where do we lie? Where do we love? Because our Lord says in the gospel, of course, that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What attracts you? What are you attached to? What will you make sacrifices for? That will always define what a principal thing in your life is, is what we will make sacrifices for is ultimately our God. And so they're beautiful images here. And I mentioned the simultaneity of teaching in the villages going forward because St. Paul in this letter to the Romans, he uses in the center of the letter as we have it quoted today, he's praising the Romans for having obeyed from the heart. And again, the word obey fundamentally means hearing, listening. So he's saying you have listened from the core of your being, from the heart, to the standard of teaching. And so we have this connection with the gospel in its detail with something St. Paul is telling the Romans that you have from the very center of your being, you have listened to the catechesis. You have heard what he calls the form or the model of teaching. So clearly there's some kind of standard that's already present in those first years of the apostolic ministry. It's not surprising. So you have, you have listened to that teaching, that apostolic teaching, and it has brought you in. But you now need to make the next step. And that's why what St. Paul does here in this chapter 6 and chapter 7 of the letter to the Romans, he uses two images. And to us, perhaps a bit shocking. The one that he uses to, and that we have quoted today in chapter 6 is commercial slave trade, buying and selling of slaves. And in chapter 7, he uses the image of marriage. Because according to our Lord's teaching, of course, marriage is exclusive, one man, one woman, and it's permanent, it's for life. And so he uses that as an image that our marriage, our union with Christ, because the earlier part of chapter six is about baptism, how it unites us to Christ, how it brings us into this death and resurrection. So in, by chapter seven, he's using the image of being wed, union with our Lord. And he's using that from the sense of saying that the law of Moses does not oblige us. That's chapter seven. So chapter six, he uses this image of slavery, being bought and sold. And we forget that the word redemption, the, ba the central part, the root of that word in Latin means to buy, to purchase, emptor. Emptor caveat. We know it in English, the phrase, but it's an older axiom of the Romans. Emptor de caveat. Let the buyer beware. Emptor. The central part of redemption means to buy. And the redemption means being purchased back. God has bought us back. But bought us back from what? From iniquity. From our own failures. From our own delusions. From the demon. All of these aspects bringing us back, not in the sense of slavery, of domination, which is the only way we think of it in the modern world, but of slavery in the sense of full possession. And so what St. Paul is saying is here, look, you know, as your background as pagans, you gave your whole lives to evil. You have to remember in paganism, paganism is not a religion that engages the person. Paganism, you show up at the temple of Aphrodite when you need something or when it suits you. You need to pass the exams, and so you go talk to Jupiter. But the notion of the imitation of Mercury does not exist. Right? Following in the footsteps of Aphrodite doesn't exist for pagans. But the wholeness of their life, St. Paul reminds them, was towards iniquity. You served yourselves. 
And he says, but now you have been purchased by God. Therefore, you belong to God. So he's using this commercial imagery of, of slave trade because he's saying what you're doing, if you don't make this false step understanding this belonging to God, which is why he says being freed from sin, being broken away from the shackles of that slavery, we have been made the slaves of justice, of holiness. We are fully belonging to this reality. And he says what we do when we don't live in that sense of the commitment towards that new master who is God Almighty, the eternal light and holiness, then we live the absurdity of the slave who having been bought by another owner, escapes in the night and goes off and does more work for the previous master. Kind of dumb. And that's why he says we commit ourselves, body, soul, spirit. He uses the image of your members, handing over your members to iniquity. I mean, it says here the parts of your body, but it's, it's clear what he's talking about then. You know, the feet that lead us to things we should not be at. The hands that have us touching things and grabbing things that we really shouldn't be doing. The eyes that are looking after things on those wonderful screens of surfing. Nobody watches porn, but porn is the biggest industry on the internet. Eyes, sense of smell, the mouth, the things that I say, the food that I eat, how I eat, when I eat. These things are all meant to be affected by the faith, by light, by the divinity, by revelation. And so St. Paul is saying you're in complete ownership now of God. He owns us to bring us freedom. And the purchase that he brought about was his own life on Calvary. This is the healing that takes place. And he says, as long as our members, as long as we're half one foot in and one foot out, we're missing the point. And so that's why this terminology that he's using in chapter six is one of absolute conformity to holiness. It's very austere. But he's saying that the master iniquity, what we used to belong to, what was its end goal? Destruction, death. So I was told there was a very popular dance and music that went on last night to raise funds for recovery for opiate addicts. And that is wonderful. But as I mentioned before the mass began, as a community, we are not stopping and asking the question, why are all of these millions of people addicts? We're not asking the question of what is the destruction that is going on within our own lives that brings about this pathetic situation of addiction and people are dropping like flies all around us day after day. We treat a symptom and we allow the cause to continue to rot. This is what St. Paul is talking about. This is why I almost never use the term spiritual life. It comes up on occasion because it's a common parlance. But I talk about the Christian life. The spiritual life can give you this idea of some kind of airy fairy world of stories. And isn't the baby Jesus story pretty at Christmas? The Christian life is an engagement of body, soul, and spirit. The entire person that is engaged. It is the image of marriage, union with God. And this engagement is of our whole lives. Bodily, as well as spiritual. The soul, all of it brought together that we become instruments, St. Paul says, of justice. That through us, holiness is accomplished in the people that we speak to, in the people that we work with, in the families that we live within, and in the communities in which we shop. We are meant to be a vehicle of this holiness. But St. Paul is reminding us in chapter 6 that we can't do this unless we make that engagement of understanding the ownership that God has of us. And so he says in verse 11, so do you also reckon yourselves? Because remember the first part of this chapter is about our Lord's death and resurrection and by our baptism we are joined to that death and resurrection. That's what gives us the possibility of entering heaven. And he says, therefore you also consider yourselves now as dead to this world. 
So you also do reckon yourselves that you are dead to sin, but you are alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You have the power of the resurrection within you if you engage within this life, body, soul, and spirit. And he says that this new life is the one that is ordered toward the eternal kingdom. So it's not the chaos of destruction, of addiction, and family collapse, and orphaned children. So that we already lived in a community where in the year 2000, over 50% of our children already did not live with both of their parents. It will only become worse in this destruction because St. Paul points it out to us. What did the fun promise you? Well, I promise you the world. This is going to be great. We're free. We're independent people. But he says in the end, what does it actually produce? Destruction, death. And we see this living out socially. We're living one of the greatest social experiments ever in recorded history of what we're doing to our children over these last 30 years. So what St. Paul is saying is we live in illusion so far as we serve the master of sin. We live that leprosy which comes out, which mutilates us, which deforms us, and which quite honestly, externally speaking, is grotesque. That is what the end result of sin is. And he says, yes, we have to serve God. We are slaves of justice. We are still have ownership. But there our members become instruments of justice and holiness, and the promise is eternal life. That's why he says, but thanks be to God that you were slaves of sin once, but having now obeyed from the heart according to the standard of teaching, you have now been delivered. This is the notion of redemption. This is the idea of deliverance. This is the idea of God being Savior. So let us ask for the grace during this time of Lent that we enter more deeply to understand our lives because we have nothing to bring to our families, to the co-workers, to the people we study with, and to the people that we shop with. If we ourselves do not hear the word of God and put it into practice in our individual lives, what about the poor things who are just laying in bed right now? They're not even close to hearing the word of God. Which is why two weeks ago in the bulletin I used the term that we are meant to become incarnate grace for the people around us. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with God. He wants us to be a channel. And it's not because it's a holier than thou. It's not that at all. That's what the world says at us because it does not want to hear. But it is the humble recognition that God desires to work marvels in this personal life in my individual life. And when I realize that, I begin the path of the instrument of justice. That is the apostolic endeavor. And if the handful of people who are still here, faithful to the Lord God, if we do that, we will be fine. If we do not do that, we will continue to deny and we'll just be more church watching one church after another close in the area. You've watched a number of them die already. And so we ask for this grace so that we can understand what it is that God desires to work of sanctification and holiness because he desires to heal that infection of iniquity in our nerves, in our organs, in our skin, in our surface, by transforming us spirit, soul, and body. So that he says in the finally in the verse, but now being made free from sin and become slaves of God, you have now your fruit, not in delusion and destruction, but the fruitfulness is in holiness. And the end, the goal of this purpose of serving this good master, life everlasting. It's a splendid hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten now to be, consubstantial. forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> of our ancestors now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name shower your spiritual blessings upon them and in place of their earthly gifts grant them life and your imperishable kingdom Amen. as we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation upon us we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those from the sacrifices offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We continue on page 774, the Anaphora of St. Peter, 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. before you to receive your blessings and assistance for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all we raise glory to you to your only son and to your holy spirit now and forever amen O oh lord may the light of your face shine upon us deliver us from every evil and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit, let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O Maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you, and with voices of praise we cry out and we proclaim. of your love for us you sent your son into the world and he became flesh of the virgin mary for our salvation
Dachlo fein kun, wachlo psagie, me terseo me ti hem. Chosoyan, hau me wachoyin, dan alam alamin. So dam sich homen hamra wo men mayo are hukade u ya bel tarmi da karo mara sabishta mehne kul ho o no deni ta ho de mo dilen dia ti ki khadato Dachlo fai kun wachlo psagie me ten shadu me ti hem Chusoyan haube wa choye nan alam alamin And he then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sin. May your mercy rest upon us. O Lord, we remember your coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you. On the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, he implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, O mighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Nite Moro Rojo Chayu Kadisho. Una rena lai no aru korvo no ho no. Descent, he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life. O Lord, accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Rashada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Nisrala Peter, our retired Patriarch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord of goodness, your holy 
church and have mercy on all her faithful. In your compassion, heal all the wounded and injured among your flock. Punish injustice and strengthen all our brothers and sisters. Bestow the grace of conversion on all. With your indestructible power, strengthen the bishops of the true faith that they may be upright and courageous in their apostolic office. May they show fidelity as they stand ever before your eternal justice. Unto your honor and glory, may they prove themselves upright, dauntless, and persevering in the task confided to them. To lead all the faithful into the fullness of your redeeming light and glory, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, though, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who are desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Marin, Saint Charbel, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Pray, remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers, and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without full knowledge. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
which we offer to your Father through you, to you be glory forever. O God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of it, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility, and ask Him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy Father, Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us, us worthy. worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord. We raise glory to you for giving us your body to give and love to drink, the lover of all people. Have mercy on us. We thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross. Be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.